Saturday, February 4th, out here on the homestead. Redneck and homestead. I'm gonna do a little tour of things today in my yard. I only got two and a half acres, but there's so much potential that you can put on two and a half acres when I watch these YouTube videos, these permacultures. I mean, these insane mass gardens. I don't think I'll get there anytime soon, but they are fun to watch and get ideas. I get so many ideas and I procrastinate and I need to stop procrastinating because there is no success in procrastination. There is only hesitation. That's why it rhymes with procrastination. So these are the baby girls. Hopefully we're all hens that all said pull it when I got them. This is their upgrade and their Messed up does not stay in, and that's okay. I don't give a shit. It's my basement. It'll sweep up real nice. I'll just throw it back in there. My seed starting area. I gotta water them, but those beets are coming up really good. And got some onions. And you know what? I didn't label anything, so I don't really recall what all this is, but I know those are strawberries. And they need water. Look at them. They're screaming at me. I put peppers in those from pepper seeds from a pepper last year. I don't know. I'm going to have to plant fresh. I got fresh. I've got so many seeds down there. So, that's all I really have. <laughs> Look at this garlic. It started growing in my fridge, so I was like, alright, let's try this out. <laughs> it looks like shit. <laughs> It's all right, we don't care. We're we're experimenting over here. We're gonna give her some water, some more water. I mean, they're starting to really bulge out. Move that soil. All right, move outside of the bee yard and the big girl's yard. Big chickens. A little bit. All right, let's take these rugrats outside. Check it out. Go check out the homestead. Stay in the backyard. Stay in the backyard. Why don't you do it, Sophie? You're like 300 times the size of those little dogs across the street. Oh, look, there go Gracie. Hi, Gracie. Gracie. Oh, here come the boys. They over here going slipping and sliding on some ice. Come on, chicka, 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 chickas. Look at Sugar Pete and her little afro. I butchered five chickens last week with the help of my neighbor Brian. These are the survivors. They made it. They made the cut. Oh, shit, she's going crazy. All right, well, let's go look at this garden. Okay. Guys, it's February. Looks like shit, I know. It's all right, I got some compost that the dog peed on, whatever. So, I put up these lathe boards I pulled down from my living room because my cats really love to use my garden as a shit box. And, whoa, uh, yeah, I should be doing that when I'm planting seeds, so I was gonna hang up some net fence. This white tubing that's going around my boxes is going to help water, but it's not going to work out. I did buy something different, and it's going to work out great. It's like those misters you see in the produce section. You get in your produce, those little misters. They worked really good last year, and I'm going to do it again this year. It's going to be for my melons, you know, watermelon and cantaloupe just grow out of that bucket. That's going to be so easy to harvest. <sighs> That's some lettuce. Look at that. It tried. It's trying. <laughs> it's dying. My blackberry bushes. See how good they come back. i got to watch a video or two on how to prune it because I know you're supposed to prune them. My strawberries look like absolute devastation. But dude, they come back so well. They will come back. I'm not worried about it. They 
are established. Let's see how much I have tapped out. I'm probably too late. I probably missed all the good tapping weather for maple trees. Uh, yeah. That's all I got so far. That's all right. I don't care. I'm just trying. You gotta try, otherwise you won't know if you can, right? That's what people say. Let's go look at the uh, beehive area. I started bees in 2020. And did really great that first summer. But then they died in the winter. So I went and got a new nuke pack from Steve Cooper out of Fredericktown. We kind of talked about what happened. They said they starved to death. And I'm like, I don't understand how they starved to death when there was so much capped honey still there. I think they just, I had the setup wrong. So when they swarmed last year, I caught that hive. And there's that other hive. So I noticed that the landing boards are not full of dead bees. And I'm pretty sure that we are still good and we are all still alive. And sometimes I come out here and I put my ear up to the back of the hive. You can hear, you can hear the buzzing. I wish I had the cephoscope, cephoscope. <laughs> we all know what we're talking about. Those little things the nurse uses to hear your heartbeat. People use those probably way better and I should probably go buy them. It's my little plum tree. This thing got knocked over but came back really well. It does need another one to produce. Also. It needs a mate. And I got three apple trees over here. I planted these ones last year. And they did really good. These two are the same. They're just apples. I don't know what kind of apples. Don't ask. But this is like a different apple tree from those two. It's like a maple. I'm sorry, not maple. It's um, a baking. It's not as sweet. It's fine. My gigantic pecan tree. This thing never lets me down. I just forget to come out and get pecans. I did get pecans last year, though. Got a big old bucket of them. Practically already ate them all, though. Under that pecan tree is a bunch of cats and bunnies that died. Well, you see up there complaining. It's the old chicken coop. It's my burn pit where that couch is. Nothing wrong with having a beer next to the campfire burning couches. I feel bad for when I burn this couch though because I know there's mice living in it. There's lots of mice living in my house. But my cats are failing miserably at killing. My dog got one though. He jumped out of the oatmeal box, fell on the floor, trapped it with its tail, and he come punching it with his face. He died quickly, I can promise you that. I can't wait. I put my pool back up. I have to do some adjustments on the ground though because it was a, it was a little <laughs> a three inches off. You gonna go skating? We go sheet of ice, Sophie. Sophie's the St. Bernard. 125 pounds. She weighs more than I do. I wouldn't mind putting a deck that goes to this. Up there bitching, ain't they? Complaining. Let's go look at the coop. I'm so glad that my dogs do great with my chickens. Yeah, that's what happens to chicken poop. It just sits over here forever. Nine months it takes to condition chicken poop to be able to use it as compost for your garden. Alright, I'm not trying to, I will slide 
forever. Ugh. Yeah, it's a wreck. Y'all, it's just too cold to be doing anything out here and cleaning. I'm not, I'm not one to be in the cold weather and enjoy it. Really, I'm not. Chicken food. Sophie, leave the girls alone. This is chicken coop. They got a pretty sweet chicken coop. They got it nice and big. A little feeder's trough there. And a bucket of water. I'd completely love to run a line out here and do some completely different things in their nesting box. <laughs> yeah, look at that. The rewards of owning chickens. Things are pricey these days. But, yeah, I got some wood downstairs. I kind of want to make better chicken boxes. And they lay over here, too. I don't see anything over there. Sometimes they poop really big, and you got to watch out because you think you're picking up an egg like Sugar Peep's egg. Because she lays a lot smaller eggs than the other ones. <laughs> and surprise, you're picking up a turd. I was looking for that chicken feeder. Look at that. That thing is so neglected. That's my fishing bag. I'm going fishing so much this year. Nothing going to stop me. I'm going to go to the river a lot. I got two river poles. I bet you it's in that other shed. What I'm looking for. I'm looking for a feeder for that coop downstairs in the basement for the babies. Because they are just eating so much and I have to change out their food so much. What are you doing? Cute little flashiness. He had frostbite on his cone. That's why he looked like that. I bet you it's in here. <laughs> I'm gonna fall and bust my butt. Let me tell you what loves living in here. Brown recluses. Everywhere. It is in here. And it's up there. In a bunny hutch. That's gonna have to wait. I need two hands to get that down. Yeah. Oh, always keep your scrap wood. You never know when you need scrap wood. Like that's all from my living room ceiling. And you've seen what I've done downstairs with the scrap wood. You never know when you could need to make something. Sometimes it pays to be a hoarder. And sometimes people just get really carried away. I didn't know I had that. That's cool. I could really use that advice. I give you some advice. Advice has come in handy. Yep, what I'm looking for is in here. Now I know when you could use returnables from OTG Missouri that they don't use no more. <laughs> That's where I work. I work at TG. I know some of you people out there like to go to the creek. There so much fun to be had. St. Bernard, soaked in water, full of water. It was heavy. It was extremely heavy. They are so worth it. So pretty. So many sunflowers in front of my house this year. No joke. And this is something that Dave helped me put together with the help of the guy who did my septic tank bringing out these gigantic limestones make a pretty garden area. Another root wad that we grabbed up. The mums, the zinnias. That flower right there when it springs. It, not springs, I'm sorry. It blooms. It smells like poop. Definitely gathers flies. And I did not clean this out because I have cats who like to just rearrange all my mulch constantly. To use it as a bathroom area. This area right here, I really thought about just relocating my strawberries and fencing them off because I have to have a fenced off garden, A, 
because of the chickens. B, because that right there, the boy on the left, he pees on everything. Everything. Oh, I forgot to show you my mulberry tree. I have a couple of mulberry trees that grow up gone along my fence line. And oh my gosh. If you're on my Facebook page, Alicia's Redneck and Homesteading, you'll see how many mulberries I can pull from this yard, plus the tree down by the creek. And I made mulberry cobbler. Mulberry jelly you can make. Mulberry pie. Mulberries are so yummy. And it's it's amazing at how many bugs you find in them when you're soaking them in water and so that when you remembered all the times that you plucked them off the tree and just mmm yummy <laughs> you're definitely getting extra <laughs> that's all right we got a mattress or two to throw out here too there's a mulberry tree that one over there is a mulberry tree. And up along that fence line up there is a mulberry tree. Actually, there's about three of them. Along with a wild blackberry bush. And here's my other mulberry tree. Uh, well, actually, there's two of them. They're really in an inconvenient spot. But we're not going to take them down. They will stay. I just have to trim them up. And I'll tell you what, man. The leaves... From mulberry trees when you dry them make excuse me like a really nice tea you can even it even has like a tea leaf smell to it and it's, mm, it's so satisfying it's my uh <laughs> other side of that building he's ready for kayak and this chick right here i have four kayaks that one's my favorite because it has a seat that has a back to it. And it's so, yeah, fishing, fishing pole holder. Nice seat. A dry compartment. And there's my swimming pool. Covered up and tucked away from cat claws. She's getting wet. Drip, drip, drip. More pallets. I have so many pallet ideas, it's not even funny. But, yeah, about two and a half acres of homesteading that I could do so much. This is another chicken coop area. I separated it. It used to all be just one gigantic hotel coop. But I thought about bunnies. I thought about turkeys. I thought about all kinds of different things. I'm probably going to just put turkeys in there. Because I wouldn't mind raising and butchering some turkeys this year. And not get super sensitive. Because I'll tell you what. The first time I ever did that, I had two turkeys. And one of them I didn't butcher because it, was just, it got really super sick. And I just... I don't know. I have to update this thing. But that other one I butchered, it weighed 25 pounds. It did take forever to cook. And it even burnt on the top because of how huge it was from my oven. But there's so much, and then I'll probably just separate these two. They say that they, you don't put turkeys and chickens together because the chickens can give the turkeys a disease. And I just don't know. That's probably what happened to my other turkey. But I see people mixing their turkeys, their flocks together all the time. And I just, maybe... Maybe they maybe they feed them Medicaid, uh, some medicated feed or something. I don't know, but I'll probably just keep it simple and just keep them separate. But then I sit there and I think, like, when I want them to roam around, I want everybody to roam around, not just the chickens or not just the turkeys. I'll let them roam around together. They'll probably just, I don't know. We'll find out. Whatever happens, happens. I don't care. It's all for fun. There's so much potential for this building out here. Greenhouse. Goat house. I thought about pigs, but I hear so many horror stories about pigs. But, man, bacon is so good. I'll show you. This used to be full of separate stalls. 
and now watch out, it's like a sheet of ice. You used to have separate stalls, bathtub, all kinds. I mean, this thing was loaded with all kinds of crap. And I burned it all because they had termites and an unbelievably large population of brown recluse because termites are brown recluse's favorite food. And so, yeah. That's right here. That's where I prep up to go check on my bees. Don't mind coming out here and fixing it up again. I fix it up every spring and then <laughs> just I clutter it back up with crap. That's all for my living room. All those lathe boards. You never know what you could do with these things. I thought about making little cute mini pallets. You know, people use that stuff. People will buy that stuff off you. It's amazing at what how cute you can make shit. Gotta get in there. And this is running. The bee yard. Oh, and this is fenced off? <laughs> because my dogs love to fucking eat. They love to eat bees. They love to eat wasp. Sorry if you see my nose running. I wonder if anybody's running around. Probably not. Belicious baby. I got room for one more hive right there. I might just do that this year. Or this next swarm I catch. You know what? I just let the wind shut that door. It's hard. You have to literally shut it from the outside. It's so stupid. I uh, have a few people that might be interested in some hives. And I have a five frame beehive empty inside that would be perfect for a starter for a beehive and I would love to share that with somebody so they can have the experience in free honey sometimes it takes a year because they have to establish that top box like that top box on that one over there that's their winter food I call it the food pantry the other one doesn't have a box on top of it because it was a very small hive in the beginning. Actually, you know what? It wasn't. It was a pretty big swarm. You saw it. It's on my it's on my Facebook page. It's on my YouTube channel. Caught that thing in that cedar tree over there on the back of a four-wheeler. <laughs> Standing. It was scary. Look at that. Oh, yes. You goofy. Now she's nasty and dirty. That's okay. They can stay in the basement. <laughs> well, yep. That'd be my little homestead. I'll probably put the cucumbers over here. You know what, though? I wouldn't mind trying to get some cucumbers to crawl up that archway. Cucumbers in your face when you're trying to walk in, walk in the garden. wanted to share that with you guys. Have a good day.